God bless you. God bless you. Welcome back to New Heart Christian Center. Welcome back to our Word on Wednesday. Truly, God is good, and all the time, you know what the saying is, that God is good. We're certainly glad to be back before you with none other than our founder, our leader, our shepherd, none other than Dr. Bishop George Eddie Butts, Sr., and our, also our co-pastor, First Lady, Supervisor of Women, Kathy Butts. And we thank God for the leadership in them. We thank God for the anointing in them. We thank God for their vision and what he's doing in their lives. Amen. In the lives of the people. Amen. As we get started tonight, we want to pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your love and your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for looking out for us. We ask tonight, Lord, that you would shine your light upon us, that you would once again open up our hearts, open up our eyes to see that which you want us to see. And Father, everyone that is watching on Facebook tonight on YouTube, oh God, we ask tonight that you would bless, that you would bless, that you would bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome back to Word on Wednesday uh, with none other than our founder, pastor, Dr. Bishop George Eddie Butts, and co-pastor First Lady Kathy Butts. Amen. And we're certainly glad to just be before you um, once again on tonight. Uh, before we get started, make sure you share. Make sure there may be somebody that you don't know that may need a word tonight. They may need this tonight. Go ahead and tag them. Go ahead and share, share, share. Let them know that uh, we're on and God has a word for them tonight. Amen. We want to continue with uh, Isaiah chapter 60, amen, and we're talking about what do you do when the light turns on? What do you do when the light turns on? Uh, what do you do when you come, when you finally begin to see things in a different light? Uh, when you finally begin to see things in a different way, what do you do when that light turns on. Amen. And we're back at Isaiah uh, 60 and 1, and it says, uh, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for the light. Everyone say the light. We dealt with the rise last week. Amen. We dealt with uh, that, that arise, meaning that it's a pulling yourself up, uh, repositioning your mind to think differently, uh, repositioning your mind to see things uh, in a different, to receive the things that you see differently. So that's, that's what we talked about arise, but uh, we want to talk about that light. Uh, this scripture uh, in verse 1 that says, the light has come. There's one thing about light that we should know on this evening is that light, listen up, does not have to compete with darkness. What did I just say? Light does not compete with darkness. Light shines through darkness. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, when light comes, uh, uh, the light, uh, darkness is just a representative of the absence of light. So when light comes, it does not have to compete with darkness. It shines through darkness. What am I saying tonight? That is when the light of God shines in your life. When the light of God shines on you, it does not compete with the darkness that you may be in. It shines through darkness. That means that once God's light shine on you, it's going to cause a reaction. What did I say? It's going to cause a reaction. It's going to cause you to feel a certain way. It's going to cause you, even it may be things that you're in, uh, it may be certain uh, uh, fleshliness things that you're in, uh, carnal things, it's going to cause you to be a little convicted because now there's light shining and it's exposing the dark. Why do you think most people like to party at night? Why do you think most crimes happen at night? Because it is dark and it does not want to be exposed. But when the light shines on you, it exposes the darkness. 
That is why. That is why we say, what do you do? What are you going to do when the light shines? When the light turns on? When the light turns on, it's going to force you to, to come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. That's what happens when the light comes on. When the light comes on, we cannot continue to be in the same way. We cannot continue to walk in the same way. We cannot continue to live in the same way. Why? It's because the light has come. The light is shining bright. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we look at this, we got to understand that light, light, light does not compete. Light will not compete with darkness. It's going to shine through it. It's going to shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God's word don't have to compete with sin. It don't have to compete with darkness. God's word shines through it and it causes a conviction. It causes a different way of seeing things. The light has shined. And so the, uh, the writer Isaiah says, Arise, shine. He gives a message of hope for the light. Someone say the light. The light has come. The light has come. And so when we look at this, if you go back a, a chapter with me, uh, Isaiah 59 and 9, you can, you can go back and reference it on your time. Um, Isaiah is talking to a people. He's not talking to uh, heathen, is what we would call them. He, he's not talking to the heathens. He's not talking to the unsaved. He's not talking to the world. But he's talking to the church. These messages, mostly in the Old Testament, was dealing with God's people. It was dealing with the church. And if you go back to Isaiah 59 and 9, this is the church getting ready to speak out. This is Zion. And so this tells us something about the church. And they say, uh, therefore, is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but, but we walk in darkness. And so what, what they're saying, this is the church, this is Zion talking. Zion says that we, uh, we, we wait for the light. We wait for the brightness. And yes, 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 it may be available, but we are walking in darkness. It's the church. I, I want you to follow me. It's the church speaking. They say we're walking in darkness. It is very possible for you to be saved. It's very possible you, for you to, to know God, to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and and we say those things, but yet walk in darkness. What does it mean to walk in darkness? To walk, this what they're talking about here, the church in Zion, in Isaiah 59 and 9, they're not talking about, no, one time I messed up, one time I made a mistake, one time this happened. They're not saying that. They're saying that it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. The darkness that they're talking about is a lifestyle. And when it is made a lifestyle, then they're saying that we have become to a backslidden state. We, we, we have become to that state of mind. Because we are walking, we are living in darkness. We know that ju judgment is far from us. But listen, we want, what they're saying is we want to do right. Oh, God help me. I want to help some, some of us. I, I, they're saying, Lord, we want to do better. 
Lord, we, we desire, we want better for our lives. We, we want to serve you with our heart. We want to serve you, Lord, with our mind. But what's happening is that every time that we seek, we seek to do good, they're saying that evil is ever present. Lord, I said I, I was going to serve you. I said I wasn't going to pick up that bottle no more. But when I, I, I had a lot of stuff on my mind, I went and picked it up. Every time I said I wasn't going to do this, I, I wasn't going to do that, I was going to leave her alone. Come on, we'll help somebody. I was going to leave him alone. I was going to leave them alone. Every time I say I want to, darkness overtake. This is Zion. This ain't. This not the folks in the world. This the church here talking. Meaning that the church had to deal with the darkness that was around them and what they had to do is look up to the light. Tell your neighbor tonight. Tell you it does not matter what type of darkness is around you. You have to look up to the light because that light is going to shine past your darkness. So they had a desire. This is what they're talking about here. Lord, I desire to do good. Lord, I desire, I desire to seek your face. Lord, I desire to worship you. Lord, I desire to come to your temple. But every time I start getting up, every time I, I say I'm going to get ready, then that spirit of tiredness hit me and I say, you know what, I'll go next Sunday. That's what they're saying. And so Isaiah, Isaiah answers them their cries with the hope and a message from God, he told them to reposition themselves. Hallelujah. He says, arise. He said, then shine for the light, the light. Why did he tell them to shine? He said, the light is come. The light is come. He told them to shine. Come on and shine. Go ahead and reflect. Reflect that which is shining on you and in you. It's time for you to reflect. Oh my God, thank you God. T tell somebody it's time for you to reflect. It's time for you to shine. It's time for you to show what's in you. It's time for you to represent that light. He says, shine. And right now in our lives, we ought to be shining because you are the only thing that others will see sometimes before they ever pick up a Bible, before they ever go to a church. They have to see you shining. They got to see you shining. And what Isaiah says, don't let darkness overtake you because there's too much light to shine through darkness. What happens when you go in a real dark room and you turn on a flashlight? It's not so dark anymore. You can see because light shines through that darkness. And so Isaiah says, for the light is come. It's also a prophetic utterance in this. It's also a prophetic utterance, and we know that there's a prophetic utterance in this verse is because Isaiah says in 59, and I believe uh, it is here at 17, 59 and 17, you can cross-reference that with me. And he talks about, uh, for the Lord has put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak 
And according to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay. Listen, listen. This is a prophetic utterance because it was speaking about, first of all, uh, future present time, and I'll show you what I mean by that, that a Messiah would come. Hallelujah. But then it peeped over all the way past that time. This is an utterance right here. Until the Lord's return. It peeps over that helmet of salvation. Put it on that breastplate of righteousness. It, it peeps over all into that time, that futuristic, that millennial time. When he comes back and he brings righteousness and salvation. And when he rules over in Israel for a thousand years. It's peeping over. It's very futuristic. So it talks about a present time of the Messiah first had to come. But then after he comes, it moves over to talk about him bringing righteousness and wearing that helmet of salvation and repaying every man according to what his work shall be. It's prophetic. And so when he says, shine thy light. We got to understand that uh, we, we've heard it before that Jesus, Jesus, he is our light. Jesus is the light that has come into the world. What do I mean? He's that light that has come to the world. He is that undeniable light. See, when Jesus comes in your life, he begins to shine out through all of the dark areas. When that light has come, he begins to expose to you, you. Did you hear that? He begins to expose to you, you. When Christ comes in your life, you can no longer say you didn't know. You can no longer say you wasn't aware. You, you, were, you, you wasn't aware of uh, what he meant or what the word said. Because when he comes, that light begins to expose all the darkness in you. It begins to convict you. And it begins to uh, remind you that you have a soul. That's what the light comes. That's what the light comes and do. When Christ comes in, he comes to expose and to correct. There cannot be correction without exposure. And so first you have to be exposed so you can then be corrected. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ comes, that light comes so he can correct those areas that darkness had tried to come clutter. He wants to correct you. He said, I wish that uh, no man would perish, but that all come to repentance. And so his first, that light comes to expose, say that, and you can write that down. The light come. The light comes to expose and to correct. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. The light comes. I got to say that again. That, that's a fact from heaven. The light comes to expose and to correct. And so, you know, the question is asked here tonight. What do you do when the light turns on? First of all, when the light turns on, it exposes. It exposes you, exposes all of the areas in your life. That doesn't line up with the will of God. It exposes all of the areas in your life that you thought was just a little white lie. Because there's no such thing as a little white lie. A lie is just a lie. It exposes. And once it exposes, you have a responsibility to respond. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You have a responsibility to respond to that light. You have a responsibility to respond to the call of God. 
When it exposes, you respond with obedience. You respond with yes, Lord. When it exposes, you respond with a yes, Lord, so it can correct you. Hallelujah. We all, we all need correction at times. And see, there's no perfect, none of us are perfect, but we all should be striving for perfection and not making excuses why we can't strive. None of us perfect. Hallelujah. None of us, none of us are perfect. We all, when it comes to the altar, I said one of my favorite sayings is that when it comes to the altar, we are all equal at the altar. We're all in the same level when it comes to the altar. Hallelujah. We all have a responsibility to respond to the light once the light has shined in us. This is why he says, arise, shine, shine. That shine words means to respond. Glory to God. That shine word means to respond. Tell your neighbor, respond. See, the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The day, if you hear his voice tonight, harden not your heart. If he's speaking to you tonight, harden not your heart. If he's dealing with you right now, glory to God, harden not your heart. The day you hear that voice, the day the light has shined on you, the day the light has exposed you. And then you know when it exposes because right then something's going to click. Right then you're going to say, oh my God, what am I doing? Why? Why am I doing this? You know what? I, I need to pray. That's what happens when the light shines. I need to pray. Glory to God. It, it'll make you do that. It'll make you feel that way. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody ought to give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. Shine, shine, shine for the light has come. So John 3 and 19. John 3 and 19. The scripture says, the scripture says, for light has come to the world. So now it moves past the church. Now light has come to the world. Some won't say the world, Craig. Light has come to the world. But men, ooh, I got to say this slow. But men, someone say but men, but men love darkness. Mm. Light, not only to the church, but light has come now to the world. Remember, he didn't just come to save those that are old. He didn't just come to those that were already in the church. He didn't just come to that. He said, I come to save those which are lost. And in that, those that are lost, the world. He says, the light has shown itself. The light has shined but there are men that rather be in darkness. There are men that say, you know what? I like it better this way. I like it better doing what I'm doing. I like it better living like this. There's men that love darkness. And even in the church, there's men that love darkness. Don't want to do right. Really ain't stutting doing right. Don't really want to live for God. Don't mind sinning. Hallelujah. There's preachers that don't mind sinning. There's missionaries that don't mind sinning. And don't mind getting right in the pulpit. And so that's what this scripture is saying, that light has come, but men love darkness. 
And so what does it say before that? This is the condemnation by itself. It's the condemnation by itself. That the light is here, but men rather walk in darkness. See, what are you, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when the light turns on? When it turns on for you? How, 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 how? How are you going to respond to it? When it hits you a certain way, when that light switch turns on, Hallelujah. You remember when we were kids? Hallelujah. And maybe we were uh, being bad and we turned the lights off. But as soon as someone turned that light on, we straighten up real fast. How are you going to respond when, you, when you're in the dark and that switch turns on? What, what are you going to do? How are you going to respond to it? The condemnation. Light has come, but men love darkness. Into the world. They love darkness. Hallelujah. And so we must understand, we must understand here that Luke 1, 78 and 79. I want you to go there with me, Luke. Luke chapter 1. Get some good teaching tonight. Verses 78, 79. Amen. Luke 1, 78, 79. And so the scripture says, because of the tender mercy, I may be reading the NIV version. Because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise from on high will visit us. The King James calls it the day spring. The dawn means the dawn. Talking about the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus, was looked at as the dawn of a new day, was looked at the day spring. Uh, you know, when you've had a rough night and the moment you see the sun coming up, it brings about a whole fresh new day. And Jesus was looked at as that day spring, as that dawn. He would be the one that brings about a new thing, a new day. Uh, even the, the, the prophet Isaiah said earlier on that he would do a new thing. Hallelujah. A new thing in you. And so he says, with which the sunrise, here we go, the sunrise from on high will visit us. And so Luke says the sunrise from on high, talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. Sunrise represents brightness. Hallelujah. He'll visit us to shine upon those who sit in darkness. What does he do? He shines upon those that sit in it. Darkness. What does it mean to sit in darkness? It means to remain. Someone say remain. The, 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 the day spring from on high, the sunrise, he shines. His, he comes to shine on those who remain in darkness. So why is he shining on them if they're just remaining in darkness? Because his love and kindness. The, the writer just said it earlier here. Because of the tender mercy of our God. Mercy. They are sitting in darkness, but he's yet shining when they're sitting in darkness. They're sitting, they're remaining in darkness, but he's yet shining on them. Hallelujah. Let, 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 me, let me make sense to this to you. While there's breath still in your body, the Lord is shining on you. Ooh, doesn't matter where you are. You may not be in the fold. You may not be completely dedicated in the Lord. You may not be completely dedicated in the church. But while you are still breathing, the sun is shining on you. It's shining light because of the tender mercy of our God. His mercy of his faithfulness, his love and kindness. 
He's still shining. Hallelujah. To you, to, to you and maybe us and whoever that may be sitting in darkness. He's giving you an opportunity to come to the light. Hallelujah. He's giving you an opportunity to come to him, to come and to give yourself over, turn yourself over to the Lord and let him work it out. He's giving you an opportunity to repent, to come, and turn your life over to him. He's giving you an opportunity. As long as there's breath in your body, that's what that means. He's shining to those that are sitting, just sitting in darkness, meaning they're just remaining there, won't come out of it, won't get up out of it, won't, won't, won't try to get to the light, but he's still shining. See, man don't have that kind of patience, but God does. Man ain't going to be patient with you like that, but God will. Huh? He is patient. Not wishing that any man, willing that, not even willing that any man should perish. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. We want to help the church tonight. And we want to help you that are watching. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter where you have been. What we're saying is that there's still room at the cross. There's still room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. There's still room. Doesn't matter what you're in. You may be in the worst place in your life right now. I want to tell you that the sunrise is still shining. Hallelujah. And when it's shining, when you see him shining, when you hear that voice, don't harden your heart. Turn it over to the Lord. Let him work it out. Turn it over to the Lord right now. You, you man, you woman, you child, whoever you are, turn it over to the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you continue to try to fix it. Don't you continue trying to do it all on your own, trying to fix it all on your own. Turn it over to Jesus. Hallelujah. The sun is shining in your darkness right now. Glory. I feel the anointing of God. Hallelujah. It's not only shining in darkness, but even in the shadow of death. Hallelujah. Even in the shadow of death. Some of you are walking in a shadow of death right now. Some of you are living in a shadow of death right now. Hallelujah. But the devil be rebuked. The Lord is shining even in that. Tell somebody, encourage somebody tonight and let them know the Lord is shining. The Lord is shining in your sickness. The Lord is shining in your body. The Lord wants to heal you. The Lord wants to deliver. Hallelujah. He's shining. Oh, the light has turned on. The light has turned on to tell you you can live and not die. It's turned on. Hallelujah. I dare somebody to give them a praise right where you are right now. Hallelujah. The light has come on. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you, tonight, 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 the light is shining even in the shadow of death. And I want to tell you to live, my brother, live, my sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay in the state that you're in. You don't have to stay in the way that you're in. But God has come to shine tonight. To let you know there's a way out. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As we get ready to close this, and he comes to shine, and then when he shines, he exposes, he corrects, and then he comes to guide. Let, let the church say God. He guides your feet into the way of peace. And so he's not going to just leave you hanging out there. He's not going to just leave you hanging. But he guides you into the way of peace. His word is a lamp unto my feet. A light to what? Unto my path, my path. And so what he's saying is that I want to be with you all the way to the end. I don't just want to show you things that you're doing wrong. I want to help correct you, and then I want to give you a light to guide yourself, to guide you your way, to guide you to peace. 
and not destruction. Hallelujah. I have come to encourage somebody. The light is shining. What do you do when the light turns on? Tell somebody to respond. Tell somebody when the light turns on, give it over. Turn it over to the Lord. When the light turns on, give it over to him. Respond through obedience. When it turns on, go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and worship him. Hallelujah, because he's shining. I want to thank you tonight for watching once again. Word on Wednesday. And we thank God for the ministry. And we're going to keep praying for you. And we thank God for our leaders, Bishop George Eddie Butts and First Lady Kathy Butts, who we always give honor to where honor is due. I thank you. God bless you. God keep you. And let heaven smile upon you.